Hello everybody, welcome back. I hope you are well. It's um, been an interesting week. Um, weather, floods in Queensland, soon to be flooding in Sydney maybe, and Lismore, 700 millimetres of rain in one day. Crazy, unheard of numbers. Who'd thought we'd be um, measuring rain depths in, um, rain amounts in metres over a week rather than millimetres. Yeah, crazy stuff. Anyway, what's happening in EV space and EV things today in Australia? Actually, on my way here to film this, I was following an EV6. The first one I've ever seen is red, looks awesome, and they're a really good looking car. And um, for what, I've, what I can read, they seem to be quite capable as well. Plenty of range, plenty of power. We're worth looking at if you could probably afford one or actually get one. Which takes you back to the previous episode I made where they've all sold out to a 2025. I mean, come on. <laughs> and people worrying about, can't get, um, takes years to get a, 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 um, a Tesla. Oh well. Come on, Kia. Get the production line cranking up. Get them over here. People want the things. So what I'm going to do now, I'm at my usual favourite spot, my usual favourite DC fast charger, which I'm going to go and do right now. But first things first, open the charge plug. And I'll leave. Yes, it's under here, believe it or not. Here we go. Unplug that. Plug the charger. Yes, I'll leave. It's your demo. Here we go. Plug it's your demo in there. Get the app. Oh, hang on. Turn the car off first, but it's beeping at me. Goddamn Tesla drivers. That's better. Car's turned off now. Yes, here it says the app, SMS app. I'm not a fan of these apps. They just um, they're just fiddly, especially when it's raining. You're in a site like this where the the rain just pours through the gaps in the solar panels. It's great the solar panels up there, but um, come on, <laughs> it's like raining on here on me while I'm trying to charge the car. Okay, there's a charge fox. Charge fox app. Where are we? Caddens. Come on, rain's getting heavier. Details. Start. Port one. Come on, where are we at? We go. 50%. Cool. We're charging. Back in the car before we get rained on. Oh man. <laughs> the solar panels are great, but the um the rain is just just drains off the gaps in the panels there. Doesn't make it fun to use these chargers, even though they're undercover. It's a bit of a bummer. Woo! The air conditioner's just turned on. That's unusual. Yes, the Omni does have a firmly managed battery, believe it or not. So the air conditioning just flicked over now and pumping cold air into the battery. It's not exactly a warm day. I don't think it'll be using the air conditioner now to cool the battery while it's charging, but it is. Hey, what's first up on our um, news in Australia? First up, I've got... Oh, yes. Might as well start with Tesla. I've got a Tesla shirt on. One of my designs, you want a, want a shirt? Planning is setting up Dogecoin as a way to pay for supercharging. That's interesting because uh, we all know Elon and Dogecoin is, um, is big about promoting it. But setting up as a payment method? Different. I wonder if that ever come to Australia. Now, I'm assuming they're going to set that up as a payment method for people that drive non Tesla EVs that are using superchargers in Europe now as a way for them to pay. I don't know. Possibly. If it comes to Australia, it'd be great. I was going to go outside and um, film in different areas and different scenes and stuff to make things interesting because apparently that's what people like rather than someone staring at a camera in one angle all the time. So you got this angle now because it's like that outside. Fair enough. <laughs> yes, Atto 3 pricing has been announced. You know the Atto 3, Tesla Tom done a great video, released last week. It's actually really priced really, really well. They compete with against the MG ZE EV. we worth a look at. But yes, pricing, $43,300 starting price. Pretty good. That's, of course, plus on roads and the rest of that sort of crap as well. So if you're looking at that, starting at 43, I'm sure if you optioned up, it's going to be more expensive, obviously. We'll do it. But also, yeah, look into your state rebates. New South Wales, Victoria, Canberra, Queensland, I think. We've all got some sort of rebate going on if you've got an EV. So make them a bit cheaper. Or it might just be enough to cover the on-road costs at least. How about this angle? Does this one work? Oh, yes. And more sobering news. Been a study out saying that um, heat waves affect magpies, unfortunately. The temperatures above 32 degrees apparently affects their breeding to the point where no chicks will survive if the heat waves are more than 32 degrees, which is sort of sad because increasing temperatures, the magpies are like, a, you know, everybody knows what a magpie is. And um, funnily enough, they don't cover as much of Australia as people think. I mean, I go to the snow regularly and crows are everywhere. It's like 2,000 metres high, minus 10 degrees, there'll still be a crow out there. Go drive to Lake Eyre, middle of the desert, below sea level, there'll still be crows out there. Those things are everywhere. Magpies, not so much. Audi e-tron confirmed for Australia. The Audi e-tron GT, I might add. Starting from 
a measly $181,000 for the base model, going up to $250,000. A quarter of a million dollars for an Audi e-tron. Well, what do you get for that kind of money? Well, you get a car that can sort of compete with the Porsche Taycans, the quick ones, the turbos, turbo pluses. I mean, turbos? <laughs> turbo, uh, I'm sorry. All right, so the, the cheap one only has 330 kilowatts. Still not that much, really, if you think about it. And the top spec ones to compete with the Porsches are 250 thousand dollars gives you 440 kilowatts of power so yeah a quick car it's a gt um hopefully we'll see you film on australian roads if people are lucky enough to be able to afford them or the business will probably buy them most likely and stuff like that you know it works so yeah more evs for australia just um not very affordable ones unfortunately speaking of charges like the one back there i'm not sure you funded this one i think it's western sydney university or it could be the arena funding which funds quite a few charges around the place now especially the um I've noticed the one at um, Cabramatta is funded by Arena, which is the government funding for stuff like charges and EV infrastructure, which is good news. And the government has just released another round of funding for the Arena um, project, or whatever you want to call it. The first lot was only $24.5 million, but they got a few charges around the place, which is good news. Second lot, $127.9 million. So with that, we should get a lot more charges around the country, which is even better news. Oh, but it's uh, unfortunately, look further into it, it's $127 million for companies and fleet operators to build EV infrastructure for people to change their fleets to EVs. The good news, if people buy lots of EVs because they end up cheap second-hand ones later. And this I'm EV alone was a $50,000 brand new car in 2010. No one in the public's gonna buy that. Maybe the really, really hardcore early adopters, but no. This car was originally bought into the country by the Victorian government under a trial, trialing EVs. Of course, it is now in our hands as a cheap second-hand EV so more fleet buyers buying EVs means more affordable EVs for everybody else. So that's good. But the funding includes hydrogen infrastructure for hydrogen refilling stations. Now, I'm sure you know my um, opinions on hydrogen and public vehicles. Ain't gonna happen. Hydrogen for long haul trucking, buses, maybe stuff like that, that travel, trucks that travel outside of the urban areas. Maybe there's a case there for hydrogen refilling stations. But um. Because don't forget, the majority of trucking is in urban areas, believe it or not. The trains come in with the freight, the ships, you're moving the freight from the terminals to the cities where they get distributed. So most trucking is in urban areas, not the big B-double trucks you see floating around on the highways out west and stuff like that. Most of them in the cities. Is this thing going to work better? Is this working or not? Well, I can't go outside, it's pouring rain and the windows are fogging up. Looking a bit suspicious. I'm filming myself in a car with foggy windows. Hmm. Speaking of good news, while well, I'm in a foggy car with a camera on my face, was um, Tasmania. A report, a study by the Examiner newspaper, suggests 80% of respondents want an EV as the next car. That's good news. 80% of people, that's quite a lot. Bad news, as we all know in Australia, hard to get EVs. So, come on, the demand is there. Let's get them out. Place. Well, yes. While on a demand thing for EVs, the RAA, which is like the South Australian version of the NRMA, is again done a study of their members and they've all again claimed about 80% respondents want EVs in the future. Which is good news because the South Australian government and the RAA have announced they're going to start rolling out more EV, more EV charging infrastructure, which is good. Over the course of the next two years, 530 charging stations, which is a lot. And most of them in rural areas, which is even better. So I think there's another excuse for people who are always banging on about EVs won't work in Australia with all your charges in rural areas. No more excuses. Oh, bad news. LG Solar. As people know, if, you've, if you're one of the three people that watch me regularly, I guess, we have LG Solar panels on our roof, the LG Neons. 25 year warranty. Unfortunately, LG have stopped making solar panels. It sucks because they're actually quite a good panel. They look good and up to 415 watts output per panel now. Ours are 330s. So um, that's bad news, but they did say they're gonna continue production to make sure they've got enough stock to cover warranty claims because like I said earlier, their warranty for um, 25 years. We've had ours for five now, so they have to keep those in stock for 20 years or keep making enough stock to keep the warranty covering for 25 years. But sad that LG are getting out of the solar game, but they are concentrating their efforts on making house batteries. For, well, not house batteries, or batteries for houses and businesses. So, obviously, house batteries. Uh, Cross are going to be hopeless, can't I? Uh, it's really starting to fog up now, <laughs> which is annoying. Okay, I'm just going to turn the car on because I'll need to get the air conditioner on because it's, I can't turn it on because it's plugged in and charging. I can't turn the air conditioning on. 
I got foggy windows, looking very suspicious. It's back to cars. Where can I, put the, where can I change and make this interesting? Got a client in the back seat like this again, maybe? Oh yes, as we know, the Polestar 2 is available in Australia. You can order them, you can configure them. They'll be arriving pretty quickly, like only two or three months time. But they've also just passed the NCAP safety tests. Five stars, as all modern vehicles should have these days. But yeah, Polestar just scored a five star NCAP rating. Awesome. That's pretty much all I got. And I'm, except one last story I managed to find, which is sort of interesting in Australia, is a uh, sort of not really Australian related. Audi, you know all the news at the moment about Tesla and their recalls. Because my phone's had like five recalls in the last couple of days, so has my watch. But um, yeah, Audi e-tron has a recall because there's an error in the owner's manual. And for a start, who reads the owner's manuals these days? I don't. But I would have thought the owner's manual had been on the car in the software these days. You know, you got all this, you know, and you got access to a lot more data on here now than you used to ever have in the past. A recall for an owner's manual change I guess. I don't really know why that's important. Uh, so that's all I got for this week's um, vlog in an EV blog. Am I a vlog and I'm in a Miami? If I post something from the Tesla it attracts negative comments and I get called EV vlog that's all crap. In your Miami? Does it get the same negative? No. I'm just a vlog in an EV. <laughs> so that's it. I'm getting wet. The car is getting pounded by the water running off the solar panels in the rain because there's no, there's no drainage. Who thought that was a good idea? So yeah, that's it for this week's episode of a Flog in an EV blog. Thank you for watching. If you haven't got this far, I really appreciate it. It um, means a lot to me. And um, take care of yourselves, especially with these current weather conditions and storms and floods everywhere. So yeah, take care of yourselves. Take care of your friends and family and anybody else that might need any kind of support. Just be there for them. So once again, thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll see you all later. Bye.